I think when we think about cochineal, we often tend to focus on the dyes that were made. And we tend to focus on the histories of Europe, either in the Renaissance paintings or either the clothing. And often what's missing is the origin story of how we got to cochineal in the first place. And it's a story about empires. It's a story about indigenous knowledge. It's a story that's much more than the actual color red. Those who initially received credit for Cochineal and its knowledge were the Franciscans and the Dominicans. They took credit for uh, allegedly teaching the natives how to gather Cochineal, how to plant the cactus, and how to basically farm the Cochineal bug. This wasn't true. The Native Americans, those who had lived in Oaxaca and Puebla and other places where you could find cochineal, had long known, for hundreds of years, had known how to not just harvest the cochineal, but had the knowledge to use the different dyes of red. Before the Spanish invasion, cochineal was used to dye clothing. But in addition to that, it was used in pre-Hispanic art. You could see the color red in the codexes that detail the lives of the Aztec Empire. You could also see cochineal used as a form of tribute because it was also a prized commodity in the Aztec Empire. Cochineal became a global commodity shortly after the Spaniards arrived in the Americas. So in the early 1500s, they very quickly noticed that, of course, you had the gold and the silver, but equally valuable was the color red, which was incredibly difficult to attain in Europe. So cochineal very quickly becomes a global commodity precisely because it produced such a rare color. By not giving credit to Mexicans, it seemed as if Mexicans themselves could not produce this without the aid of European knowledge. And it created this idea that the knowledge itself was European in the making, that it was either Spanish or the influence of other European countries, leaving out of the narrative Mexican know-how, Mexican technology, Mexican ways of knowing everything about the bug, the plant, and how to produce these different dyes. When we think about the history of cochineal and we think about it within the larger histories of extraction and commodities, we tend to not place cochineal at the forefront of the histories of commodities. When we think of extraction in the Americas, we tend to gravitate toward gold, toward silver, toward bananas, toward oil or rubber. But cochineal probably before any of these, was one of the most coveted because it created a sense of luxury in faraway Europe. Not everyone could wear the color red. At a time when the majority of the population, especially farmers or those of the lower classes, wore these drab colors. Think of the browns that you see, the dark olive greens. Only the elite, only those in power, could wear the purples and the reds. And the brighter the red, the better it was in terms of announcing your status within society. It was the color, as others have written, the color of desire. Cochineal was a carefully guarded secret because if you revealed how cochineal dye was made, that meant that others would acquire this knowledge. And what I mean is that when cochineal arrives in Europe, it looked like a little silver, dark, black granule. People didn't know if it was plant, if it was animal-based. So there's a real race to try to discover what is cochineal. And the Spaniards were quite clever because they understood that as soon as people discovered, and by people I mean the competition, as soon as the competition discovered what cochineal was, what its origins were, that they could lose this monopoly in the production of cochineal. So when we talk about global commodities, it was the attempt to control the cochineal trade that reveals just how important it was. I hope that those who visit the exhibit will take away a much deeper understanding of what studying a single color reveals about our history, about ourselves, about our past desires, about what we really felt we needed and wanted, but also that cochineal in studying the color red, it reveals this multiple layers of empire, 
of native knowledge, of European desire and trade, all rolled up into one little insect that lived on a cactus.